1 Peter chapter 2. We are having baptism on Sunday. So far, we have one. So, all right. So, one person getting baptized on Sunday morning. So, praise God for that. Amen. That's awesome. Amen. That's awesome. If you know anybody that needs to be baptized, if you need to be baptized yourself, talk to me after service. We'll make that happen on Sunday morning. Also, if everyone could be in prayer, that Liana's parents will come to church yes. to witness this. Yes. We'll pray for Liana's parents uh, to come out as well. Um, what are their names again? Brad and um, Shay. Brad and Shay. So pray for Brad and Shay to come out. And then they'll you'll be able to hear a clear plan of salvation. Um, uh, so, man, that's one of the good things about baptism. Is families come out and they can hear the plan of salvation. So praise God for that. All right. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. We're going to talk about spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to God. All right. Spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to God. 1 Peter chapter 2, we're going to read verse 5, all right? Uh, Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Let's read verse 6 as well. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Let's pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we love you so much. I pray you work in this sermon tonight as we learn about the acceptable sacrifices to God. We love you so much. And there I pray. Amen. An important principle taught in Scripture and the New Testament is one of the priesthood of the believers. All right, the priesthood of the believer. Now, we're Baptists here. Anybody here, the Baptists, the Sanctives, you know, they're, they're talking about uh, biblical authority, autonomy of the local church. And P is priesthood of the believer. Well, what does that mean? Anybody, what does priesthood of the believer mean? Believer. It means that we can have direct access to God ourselves. We don't have to go through a priest anymore. Right. Now, back in the Old Testament, they had to go through a priest to talk to God. Well, we don't got to do that no more, praise God. We can talk to God ourselves. Right? We, can, we can get on our knees wherever we want and have direct communication with the Lord. We are priests uh, 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 because of that. It is true that under the uh, law of Moses, there was a distinction made between priests and common people. Even today, many religious professing uh, religions professing to be Christian have developed a clergy-laity distinction. But the New Testament teaches otherwise. Let's look at Re uh, uh, Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. All right. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 5 says this. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the king of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and the dominion forever. Amen. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, we're already there in 1 Peter chapter 2. Let's read verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So we see in the Bible is that really there's no uh, clarity, a uh, 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 clergy laity distinction. All right, there's no, there's no one. Who, me as a pastor, Pastor Walt, Pastor Harry, um, they're not any closer to God because we're pastors. All right. In fact, in most church, a lot of churches, I'm probably saying here, there are people who aren't who aren't pastors who are probably more spiritual than you and me and Harry, Pastor Walt. Mm -hmm. So they're, 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 just because someone's a pastor does not mean that they have some kind of special access to God. No, we all have direct access to God ourselves. Amen. And praise Him for that. You know, you know, people come to me and say, Pastor James, can you pray for me because of, of uh, my sin? And I say, well, you can pray yourself. But my prayer doesn't hold any special weight. All right? My prayer isn't more special than your prayer. God is no respecter of persons in that sense. And He wants you to talk to Him. He wants you to talk to him. Now, don't get me wrong. If you call me, I'll pray for you. All right? <laughs> I'll pray for you. Someone called today and said, Pastor James, pray for so-and-so. So I prayed for so-and-so. Someone called yesterday and said, hey, can you, uh, can you and the pastors pray for uh, uh, this individual? So what did I do? I called Pastor Walt, and we prayed for the individual. Then I called Pastor Harry, and we prayed for the individual. So don't get me wrong. We will pray for you. But you had the direct access to God yourself. We are all priests, uh, the Bible teaches. 
Uh, the fact is, in Christ, we are all clergy, all right? We are all clergy, all right? I used, I used to say that we had a, a no clergy in the church and we're all lady. But in reality, if you're looking at that sense, we're all clergy, okay? We all had that special relationship with God, all right? You have that with God. You don't need... Well, you, you don't need me to, 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 to intercede for you on your behalf, right? You are a priest of God, and we talk to the high priest who is who? Jesus, Jesus Christ, who is our high priest, all right? Yeah. As a royal priesthood, our responsibilities are described in 1 Peter chapter 2. And we see that defined as, to offer, number one, offer spiritual sacrifices and sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So my goal in this sermon tonight is to make sure that we understand our duties as a holy priesthood, because we are a holy priesthood. Each and every one of us, if you're saved here tonight, you're a holy priesthood. And to encourage us to carry out our duties faithfully. So let's take a, a, a close look at this, all right? Let's take a look at uh, uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5 again. We're going to read it again, and then we're going to delve in and see what it's talking about, all right? 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, let's read it again. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So what are spiritual sacrifices, all right? There are different types of sacrifices to be offered by Christians, all right? Number one, our bodies. Our bodies. Romans chapter 12. Pull up Romans chapter 12 on the screen, Ryan. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, all right? Let's all look at this together. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to unto God, which is in your which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we see, as Christians, we're supposed to present our bodies, our whole selves, as living sacrifices. That's why we're supposed to take care of our bodies. I like what Miss Julie is doing uh, with, with health, all right? Because as Christians, we're supposed to be healthy. We're supposed to take care of our bodies, right? Yeah. These are the temple of the Holy Ghost, the Bible teaches. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, you know, if you ever read the Old Testament and see how meticulous they took care of the temple, do you take care of your body? Do you take care of your body? Do you eat what you're supposed to eat? Yeah. No, do you, no, no. Ice cream, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, it's a little fat. Right, <laughs> but I like ice cream. You know, uh, I've been convicted, and you guys are gonna say amen about this. I've been convicted about my coffee consumption. All right, and I like coffee. All right, so I'm down to two pots a day. All right, so I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Don't tell my wife she's gonna beat me up. Right, so. But uh, actually, ever since I got that latte, that, that little milk foamer latte machine, it kind of cut my coffee consumption in half. All right, because half of it's like half of it's uh, almond milk. Instead of all this whole cup of coffee, it's almond milk and coffee. So I think that helps. I think it counts, right? No sugar, almond milk and coffee. All right, I'll count that. But uh, we're supposed to take care of our bodies, all right? Uh, I, got, I recently got, now I used to, used to go to Gold's Gym all the time. And I'd go there for an hour a day, all right? And I'd work out. And you guys remember, I was fit. Well, I don't know what happened, right? But I was down to 155 pounds. I was doing great. And then Jet was born, all right? <laughs> then Jet was born. Now I go to Gold's Gym and like clockwork. I check him into the nursery, I can set my timer, I walk through the walk through the elliptical thing, and I'm like, all right, five minutes, James Kleinus, please report to the uh, children's zone. <laughs> all right, well, let's cut my stuff, and I gotta go and get my kid and take him home because they kick him out of the nursery because he cried so much, right? So so I gotta leave the nursery because he cried. Um, in fact, I was uh, I was uh, working out, I was talking to this lady, and, you know, whenever I work out with somebody, I try to give the plan of salvation, so that's nice. So I know you do that too. I've seen you there talking about the Lord to people, but um, trying to give some of the plan of salvation if I'm working out next to somebody, and I'm like, well, that's my call. They're like, what? I'm like, yeah, my, my kids get kicked out of the nursery. Like that was that was me about 20 minutes ago. I dropped them off at my mom, their mother, uh, my mom in law's house. So I'm like, oh, you're you're lucky. So <laughs> you're lucky. My mom, my, my grandma, my my mom lives in Rosedale, so I'm not gonna drive to Rosedale to go to the gym. But I recently got. Uh, from uh, Al Hughes, I don't know if any of you guys know him. Uh, he goes up to uh, 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 Johnny Brewer's church, but he gave me his little thing, all right? Yeah, so I've been in my house, and I put it right next to my TV, all right? Right, right, right in, my, in that little dining room area, so I can see the TV at an angle, and I'm in the morning, all right? Trying to take care of my body, trying to get it back down to that 155 pounds, trying to watch what I eat, count my calories again, take care of my body, all right? 
You know, the, the, it's important to take care of your body. You know, we, we can take significant amount of years off our body by what we eat, what we consume, what we do with our bodies. And, you know, that may not seem like a big deal to you, but that lowers your effectiveness for the kingdom. God may have you uh, specifically set around for 75 years to do his work. And if we, by taking care of our bodies, lower that to 55 or 60 years, that's a detriment to the kingdom because we're not doing our job properly. Right? We will be held responsible. I think so, too. I think we're going to be held responsible for that. For the many people that could have been saved if we were taking care of our bodies properly. So taking care of your body is a living sacrifice, the Bible says. Also, a lifestyle characterized by sacrificial love. We talked about sacrificial love on Sunday night. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 and 2 there, Ryan. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. Probably going to get there before I will. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. But be therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ hath also loved us, and hath given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling Savior. Do you love? Do you love people? That's what's called an agape style love, a sacrificial love. Do you love people? You know, uh, there, there's a huge misconception going around in the community, you know, in the community and in, in the world, even in America, that if you disagree with someone's lifestyle or their political views, you don't love them. No. You can love, the Bible tells us to love everyone. All right? So they're supposed to love people. I don't care if they're the biggest sinners in the world. You're supposed to love them. Someone said I was on Facebook, and someone was trying to call that out. Like, hey, if, 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 you, if so-and-so was alive during this day, would you love them? Yeah. The Bible says to. We're supposed to love people. I don't have to agree with people's mindset. I don't have to agree with abortion. I don't agree with abortion, all right? I think it's evil. I think it's vile. I think it's murder. But I can love it as someone who does. Hey, you no, know, exactly, exactly. We're supposed to love people, care for people, reach out to people, right? Not shun them. The whole Westboro Baptist Church thing is it's a travesty in the name of Christ and the name Baptist, to be frank, right? To where they go and protest funerals and protest all these different things. That's that disgusting, disgusting perversion of the Word of God. Jesus Christ loved all. So if people take that aside, they go, oh, Jesus doesn't love everybody. And watch that doctrine. Watch it out. Because people are going around uh, in the community and telling people that God doesn't love everybody. They say that. God does not love everybody. Right? But, yeah, and they say God, God hates so-and-so. Yeah, God hates wicked lifestyles. God hates our flesh. God does hate our flesh, our sinfulness. But God wants all men to be saved. For God so loved the what? Yeah. Does, does that mean the crust? Does that mean the crust? No. No. Does that mean the trees? Right? Does that now does that mean the birds? No, that means the people that live in this world. God so loved the world that he is only begotten Son, and whosoever believes in him should not perish but an everlasting life. And we are to walk in Christ's steps, the Bible says in First Peter. We'll talk about it later. We're not supposed to walk in Christ's steps. We're supposed to live like Christ. And if Christ loved the world so much that he died for it, and we're supposed to live the exact same way, how are we living? Are we loving the world? What about people of different political views than you? Talked about this a little bit on Sunday. Love them. Love them. Disagree with their policies, that's fine. I think it's I think it's foolish to get caught up in a lot of that stuff nowadays, right? To where people are arguing and getting mad. In fact, one, I'm not gonna mention the person's name, but one big time political figure said that there, we shouldn't be civil for toward people who disagree with us. And when, when so and so there's certain people get elected, then we can be civil again. It's a big political, political figure. I'm not going to mention the name. You can look it up at home, all right? I think that's horrible. We should be able to get along with people even though they disagree with us politically. Even though they disagree with us. Get along with the Muslim people that live in the ABC streets. If you treat them like dirt, they're not going to listen to the Savior, right? We're going to love all people. We're going to love all people. A lifestyle, char char lifestyle characterized by sacrificial love. Now, the Bible says in the New Testament that Jesus Christ said that if, uh, if someone compels you to go through a mile, go with them twain. Uh, no, if someone wants to, your, sues you for your coat, give them your cloak also. Well, a lot of people don't know what that story signifies. Back in the ancient days, the Roman people, the Roman soldiers, had a legal, they had a legal uh, thing they were allowed to ask people to help them carry their supplies for a mile out of town. Okay? So the soldiers would, would ask people, and they, and they had 
hatreds are towards some different people. So, like, uh, let's say I was a Roman soldier and I hated Steve Keesler, all right? <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> I could say, I could go to him all the time and say, hey, Steve, help me take my, help me take my stuff a mile out of town, all right? Roman, a Roman mile out of town, all right? And you'd, you'd be legally uh, obligated to do it. Well, Jesus Christ is saying, even that Roman soldier that treats you like dirt and picks on you and, and does everything horrible to you, uh, he, uh, walk, he tells you to walk with him a mile, go with him two miles, all right? Show him Christ's love so your enemies in the community, on the job, people you disagree with, show them Christ's love no matter what happens, no matter what they do for you, a sacrificial love. Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13, we're going to go to point number three here. I may not get through point 1A tonight, all right? We'll see, all right? <laughs> Hebrews chapter 13, Hebrews chapter uh, 13, verse 15 there, Ryan. Hebrews 13, verse 15. It says this. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. So we see one of the sacrifices that are supposed to be offered by Christians is praise and thanksgiving, which we do in prayer and song. No, I love uh, when I get to drive places. Whenever I used to drive from Old Dundalk, where I used to live before I moved over here, I used to look, have a certain playlist that I listen to all the time. My favorite songs and uh, uh, and Avalon and you know and all these different uh, casting crowns, all these good songs. I'd praise God to my way to work, get myself pumped up, right? It's got, I'm, I'm getting ready to go serve God for the day, all right? I'm getting put myself pumped up, right? Now I have to take a slow walk from the uh, from the parsonage over here. But um, uh, but uh, I like a lot of these songs. And, you know, we talked about music before, so we're not going to get too much into that. But worship and praising and, and singing to the Lord amplifies your worship time, right? Mm -hmm. Now it's not it's not your worship time, okay? You know that 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 ten minutes it takes to drive from Old Dunlop over here singing casting crowds is not my worship time, okay? That, that that's a fun time, it's something I do and I praise and I praise the Lord for, but it's not my worship time. My worship time is in my prayer closet. My worship time, my my, my devotion time is open my Bible in the morning, uh, sitting on that my little red chair over there as as my, Jet and the man there are asleep, right? And I read the Bible and I pray, and then and then as I as I um. As uh, I add music to later, as I walk around the day singing, praise to God, it amplifies my worship experience. I have a hard time sometimes motivating to go out and pass out flyers for the church, right? You know why? I don't like doing it. <laughs> I'm being frank, right? I don't like going door. I used to love it. I have no idea what happened. I'm not, I used to love going door to door in the community, putting flyers for the church in there. I used to love doing that. I have a hard time motivating today. Today, I was having a super hard time motivating, okay? I'm sitting in my office. They're working on some paperwork stuff I had to get done, and I'm like, man, I gotta go in and uh, I gotta go out and pass out flyers in the building. But I got a thousand flyers to pass out, all right? I got a lot of work to do. I still gotta do some more tomorrow. So if you wanna help out, talk to me after service, all right? But uh, I got a lot more flyers to pass out. And uh, I'll sit in my office and I'm like, you know what? While I'm doing my paperwork, I'm gonna play uh, some uh, good Christian music. So I'm playing a song, Can't We Live the Day Without You, Lord? And uh, I'm singing it and I'm listening, I play it two, three, four times, and I'm like, Man, I'm complaining about going out and passing out flyers. This is the least I can do, right? To go out and give the word of God out. So, man, head out and go door to door passing out flyers. I see, I don't like going door to door and not talking to people. I like talking to people. I like going down the giant and passing out. Uh, no, I use Jet. <laughs> Jet's my tool. My son's my tool. And I'm really telling him to say hi and bye. So if you see me in the store, I'll, I'll be pushing my cart and I got all my flyers in my pocket, my tracks in my pocket, my business cards, whatever I have. And I'll be like, all right, Jet, say hi, say hi, and just waving at anybody. Right? Yeah. Hi, <laughs> hi. And what do people do when a ba little baby waves hi? They stop. Oh, hi, hi. Oh, how you doing? I'm Pastor James from Freedom Baptist Church. All right. I, I start talking to him, giving him the gospel, all that cool stuff. Uh, but going door to door, I don't got Jet, all right? So people are like, what are you doing on my yard, man? All right. So I don't got Jet, all right? So, uh, so uh, I like going and talking to people, but I knew what I had to do. I knew my jo what my job needed to be done today. I knew what God wanted me to do today, so I had to go up. I go out and pass those flyers out. I used music as a motivation for me in that case to help me have the gumption to go out, right? And it helped me, right? It amplifies our worship. Um, it, it, it's, it's a sweet sacrifice to God when we sing praises to his name. Do you go up throughout the day singing Amazing Grace? Man, praise God for his grace. Our victory in Jesus Oh, man, praise God for his music. Man, and you don't know any songs, make up a song, all right? No, 
you, you might have a new hit, all right? Number one on the charts. Make a write a song, all right? About the Lord, all right? Um, I'm all good for new music. My brother wrote a, wrote a couple songs one time, and he actually uh, he sent it to a hymn book, and he got denied. But hey, he did it. So I didn't wrote it. He he did better than writing songs. I I haven't written I've written nothing. But um, so anyway, if you see that, we see a praise and thanksgiving, which we do in prayer and song. Uh, number four, doing good and sharing with others. Look back in Hebrews chapter thirteen. Hebrews chapter thirteen again, verse sixteen. What's a good sacrifice to the Lord? What is a type of sacrifice to be offered by Christians? Uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 16 says this. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices is well pleased. Sacrifices, God is well pleased. To do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. You know it's a sacrifice some to take time and go tell people about the Lord? You sacrifice time. You sacrifice energy. You know, most of us would rather be sitting down on our, our couch at home eating ice cream or something, right? No. <laughs> Who here likes ice cream? Amen. Praise God. I love ice cream. I mean, low-fat almond ice cream, okay? All right. Gluten-free, vegan, all right? All this stuff. I'm just kidding. Right? I'm just kidding. I tried When I was on my diet, eating my low calories, I tried that sugar-free ice cream junk. Oh. Oh, no way. No, I was, I was pouring sugar in the sugar free ice cream. Anyway, it's beside the point. Okay? Beside the point. All right. Uh, sometimes it's, it's a sacrifice to go out and communicate to uh, people about the Lord. You get a little nervous, right? You're sacrificing yourself on the altar to God, saying, you know, I'm, I'm proud. I'm, I'm pride. I'm nervous. I'm scared. God, you lead me. You control me. You take me. I'm going to go out and preach the gospel. But the Bible says that sweet sacrifice is to do good. Do you help the community you live in? Do you do good? Do you clean up? I think of my mother-in-law, who used to live in a... I like you guys know my mother-in-law, Kathy. She used to live here before she moved out to South Carolina uh, for a couple months. Uh, but um, they lived in Dyer, Indiana, over by Chicago. And even where Gary, Indiana is out. Mm -hmm. yeah, Gary, Indiana. She lived nearby. It was nearby Gary, okay? And you guys know where Greg Gary is. Um, <laughs> it used, used to be the murder capital of the world, right? Now we are. Now, now we are, yeah. Pray for our community, all right? But... Um, they, uh, my, my mother-in-law would go around her community, her little area, and she'd pick up trash and put it in the back of her car and throw it away, right? This is a, just as a testimony, right? Just to do good for the community. Do we do stuff like that? Do we go around our community and pick up garbage? You see trash and you just leave it? Or do you, oh, God forbid you add to it. I'll never forget. Uh, we, were dry, we had teens in our car. We were driving back from uh, some activity somewhere, and we were, we were in Dundalk. And uh, I had teen boys in my car, and my wife had teen girls in hers, right? And we were driving back. And my wife called me. Stop the car. Yes, ma'am. No, my wife says, stop, you obey. All right, so I, yes, ma'am. All right, stop the car. Pull over to the side of the road. She comes out of my car, points at a teen boy and says, you threw trash at you litter, go pick it up. I was like, all right. So the teen boy, the teen boy had to get out, and the teen boy went and got his trash, and he threw on the ground. We walked probably 100 feet, whatever it was. I'm not even sure if you grabbed the right piece of trash. I have no idea what he dropped. But he had to pick up trash, get back in the car, and watch you don't litter in our community especially, all right? We gotta keep our community clean, right? Do we keep our community clean? We shouldn't litter, we shouldn't trash our community. How would it be, you know, people know Pastor Roll is one of the associate pastors here, they see him trashing the community, that wouldn't be good. Well, people know where you attend, people who know you. Uh, uh, you gotta do good. Do good in the community, help out the community, right? Get involved in the community, go to community town hall meetings, right? Get involved in that kind of stuff, do good. Uh, things for our community and share the Lord find any testimony any way to share the Lord I never th never forget Pastor Barry telling me the story about when he was attending the uh, fostering classes Okay, he went to these uh, uh, When he uh, was getting these kids to foster those six uh, those six kids He had to go to these fostering classes and they gave him all Everyone else in this meeting they gave five minutes or was it like three or five minutes, whatever it was Let's say three minutes. I don't remember how long it was um, to, to uh, say anything they wanted about themselves Pastor Barry's like, I can get the gospel plan in three minutes, right? So he's in this, he's in this whole meeting with 20, 30 people, three minutes. Hey, I don't need to say anything about myself except I'm a sinner saved by grace. Praise God for him. Praise God for the Lord. Praise God for what he did. Here's the gospel. Give him the gospel. Man, do whatever you can to get the gospel to the community. I like what Al does. Al's got his testimony written on the cards, all right? And he goes and gives people his testimony. That's great. There's no better salvation plan than your testimony than our life changed by saving grace. Amen. Right? Communicate the gospel to people. Talk to people. We don't need to be stuck in our phones all day, all right? 
No, that, that's something that's bad with my generation. I know that, right? A our generation, Andy. Our generation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're stuck in our phones sometimes. You know, we don't like talking to people, okay? <laughs> now, we don't like sitting on the buses and, and uh, we were like, all right, I'm going to be on my phone, sitting on the planes on my phone, sitting everywhere on my phone, and uh, walking to the grocery store like this, all right, what on my they phone. Call us? I'm sorry? What do they call us? Uh, millennials. Yeah, millennials, all right? That's what we are, all right? So th that's how we are. But some, we as millennials got to get out of our phones. Hey, you know, uh, baby boomers aren't. I, I saw a picture of baby boomers all, all sitting on a newspaper. So you guys are just as bad with newspapers, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, no, they're uh, so. Uh, but we got to get out of our shells sometimes to go talk to people. Even the introverts, we have a job. I'm not introvert by any means. Even introverts have a job to be able to tell people about the gospel. It's all of our job. Sometimes we've got to step out of our shell and go preach the gospel to the community, right? We're supposed to do good to the community and communicate the gospel to the community, right? <laughs> Philippians chapter 1, number 5. Philippians chapter 1. We're almost done, and I'm going to get through point uh, number 1, point A, all right? <laughs> I still got point B and point number 2, all right? Well, I'll talk about that next week. All right. Uh, Philippians chapter 1, verse 20. Philippians 1, 20. According to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. And everything we do in life and even in our death needs to be glorifying to God. I like how Paul wrote this. That with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body. With all boldness. Do you pray for boldness? You know, back in Acts, when you look at the early church, the apostles, Paul and uh, 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 no, excuse me, Peter had just been thrown into jail. Peter and John were just thrown into jail after Pentecost. While they're in jail, thousands of people are getting saved. They have no idea they're in jail. Okay, uh, they have no idea what's going on. They get out of jail. Um, they're they're threatened with death. Said, "Hey, you go if you preach this gospel, we're going to kill you. Right? We're going to kill you guys." They got beaten, sent home. They went home and they were scared to death. They met with all the apostles and said, "Hey, they're threatening to kill us." So what did they do? They prayed. No, they prayed first. They did go out and preach. Yeah, but they prayed. Pentecost was going on. Right? People are getting saved, but they're scared to death. They get down there and say, God, give us boldness and reach out your hand and touch people's hearts so that people will get saved. Well, what did God do? God moved. Now, God moved. God moved. Now, if you pray for boldness to spread the gospel out, he gives it to you every single time. i got to do it before I knock at every single door. Before I talk to every person, it's God, give me boldness. God, give me boldness. God, give me boldness. I'm not, I don't want to use myself as an example because I don't like doing that. But it works. I'm telling you that it does work. When you pray for boldness, God gives you the boldness. It's like you're fearless. So yeah, of course you're going to be nervous talking to people about the Lord. The devil doesn't want you to talk to people about the Lord. Your flesh doesn't like that. Your flesh is full of sin. doesn't like when you go tell people about the Lord. So as you are standing right in front of someone, and the Holy Spirit is telling you, don't talk to that person. Say, God, give me boldness. Stretch forth your hand to that person right there, that they'll accept your word, and then you'll give them the gospel. You'll be boldness. You'll be bold. You'll be full of boldness. God will give you the power. God will give you the energy. God will give you the gumption to go do it. But you've got to pray for boldness. Amen. I think a lot of us think the early apostles were super Christians. They weren't super Christians. Paul denied Christ. Paul denied Christ. They were fishermen. They, they didn't go to Bible college. They didn't go to seminary. Right? Now, they, they were taught by the word. They were taught by Jesus Christ. But we had everything we didn't hear. Right? We have the word right here. But they had boldness because they prayed for it and they asked God for it. And those 12 men turned into thousands, flipped the world upside down. What can, a, what can a church of 120, 150 people do? If we all get excited and, 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 and bold to serving God, what can a church this size do? If, let, let, let's take out the, the other 150 people in the church. What could a room this size do? And the teens over there and the children, about 40, 50 people. What could, what could this size people do? 
and told to turn the world upside down, if every person gets serious in here about spreading the gospel out and, and, and being bold in life and death, we wouldn't have a lot of these moral problems the country has. The problems wouldn't be there. But no, I, like I mentioned all the time, in most services, you know, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, Amen. and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. Then will I forgive Amen. their sins. Then will I hear the land. It's time for Christians to be serious, to be bold, to offer their bodies as living sacrifices to God, to offer their minds, their, their, their voices and song and praise to the Lord. Is your life a sacrifice to God? Because you're a priest. You're a priest. You're, you're the, in the priesthood of the believers. You have a direct line of access to the Father. You can talk to him. Do you, you study the word? Do you pray? Let's as Christians be proper sacrifices for the Savior. Let's as Christians be proper sacrifices to the word. Let's live as proper sacrifices. Let's pray. Your gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much. For this passage, God, and I know we didn't even we didn't scrape the surface of the depth of this passage that it has, God. Um, we didn't even get through the point A of number one in my in the outline, God. There's so much more we could talk about, God, but I pray you'll do a mighty work in the people here at Freedom Baptist Church, Lord. I pray that this church will be a church of a sacrificed people who have put their lives on the altar, who said, God, I'm gonna serve you no matter what happens to me. I'm going to give my life to you no matter what happens to me. I don't care what happens, God. I want to serve you. Give me boldness. Stretch forth your hand. And I'm, I'm praying right now, God. And I and you know, in, our, in my prayer time with you, God, uh, I, I know it's there, Lord. I know people have talked to me about it. Other pastors in the community, we've talked. Lord, we believe Dundalk's on the precipice of a revival. We believe it, God. I'm praying right now that you will stretch forth your hand to every single individual in Dundalk, Lord. Every single individual in this community, stretch forth your hand, Lord. I pray that there'll be, there'll be so many people trusting in you as their Savior that it wouldn't be able to fit in all the churches in Dundalk, God. I beg of you to do, to do a mighty work. A mighty work, God. But that starts with us getting on our knees and begging you to do the work. And getting our lives right. And living a sacrificial life ourselves. And living a life acceptable as being a priest. God, I pray that we would be and fulfill that role as a priest. Anybody here say, Pastor James, with all heads bowed and eyes closed. Say, Pastor James, no, I'm not living as a priest of, the, of, of God right now. I'm not living like I should be living. Anybody, raise your hand. I see those hands. I see those hands. Three, four, five, eight, six hands. And I see those hands. Praise God. Seven, eight, nine. I see those hands. Praise God. But why not? No. Through your spirit. You know, we have a flesh and spirit inside of us right now. And we're both at war with each other at all times. Yield to your spirit. The Bible tells us to die daily to our spirit. Do that tonight. Say, God, give me the strength now. God, can only by your grace, only by your strength can this happen, God, can you help me yield to my spirit and live a proper, holy, acceptable life. Pray right now and say, God, work. Move. Move in me right now. Help me to live a Christian life I'm supposed to live. Pray that right now there are your seats and help me to live a proper, holy, acceptable life. Your gracious, holy, heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for this Wednesday evening, God. It's just kind of this little uh, um, energy, uh, energy drink service throughout the week, God, you know, uh, to give us a little more pumping, God. And I, I love church. I love the excitement church brings. I love the energy church brings and, and how it helps me even as I'm preaching uh, to want to go out tomorrow and just do the job, God. And I pray that this would be a, a good encouragement. Church would be an encouragement to the people of God to do the work, to do your work. Uh, Lord, I pray that we would go out as, as, as ambassadors for you and preach your gospel with all boldness and live like uh, a priest, God. And live like your priest, God. A holy sacrifice acceptable unto you. Lord, I love you so much. And I pray. Amen. 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 Sunday morning, we're going to be continuing through Colossians. Okay, you're not going to want to miss it. Colossians has been awesome. You agree? Right, Colossians has been awesome, right? We're going to continue through Colossians, and then Sunday night, we'll finish this sermon, okay? <laughs> so wait, wait, Pastor Harry may preach this Sunday night. I have no idea. I'll schedule, right? But we'll finish this sermon eventually, okay? Uh, God bless you guys. We'll see you later, right? <laughs>